Welcome back to this video on M2 mechanics. Today we're going to look at the start of our variable acceleration unit. So this one we're just going to be looking at functions of time. It's quite straightforward. Um, it's usually not really always a full question on its own. might be part of uh, another question. But it just introduces us to this variable ac acceleration. So essentially, if the acceleration of a particle, a moving particle, is variable, variable, it varies, means it can change with time, therefore it can be expressed as a function of time, which is what we're looking at here. And that means I can show it as a velocity time graph. Now, the gradient of one of these graphs is my acceleration. So a graph that moves getting steeper and steeper and steeper would have an increase in acceleration. So something along the lines of this, where my graph is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. As that gradient gets steeper, means the acceleration is getting larger. So this would be increase in acceleration. And equally, if my graph was kind of decrease in acceleration as in it was getting slower and slower the graph its gradient would get smaller and smaller so it could be something like this starting steep and getting a smaller and smaller gradient okay you could also keep on going down like this and then you'd have essentially a negative acceleration you know when that thing then might slow down to zero and then the velocity might then start going in or the particle might start going in the opposite direction but anyway this is decreasing acceleration and all we're looking at in this video is just getting a basic understanding of this function of time and linking you know displacement velocity um, and time together now, while you may be asked to draw a velocity time graph as part of a question, I'm not going to do any in this video as sketching those kind of graphs. They are quite straightforward, whether it's like a quadratic or even a cubic or part of it. It's not too difficult. So I'm not going to do any like that. I'm just going to stick with some of the algebraic style of questions. So let's get into a couple of examples. So a nice easy one here. A body moves in a straight line such that its displacement, s meters, from a point O at the time t is given by s equals 16t minus t cubed. So just thinking about, remember, displacement is a vector distance. Yeah, so it's about the distance essentially between a point and, say, the origin in this case. Okay, it won't be the total distance travelled. It'll just be between that the start point and whichever kind of end point you're looking at. Okay, so it's just worth bearing that in mind. Remember, displacement is a vector distance, essentially, rather than like an overall distance. Um, now, with this one, very straightforward. Find S when T equals 2 is just a substitution, isn't it? So we have our formula here. Substituting t equals 2 in gives me this, so we get 32 minus 8, so we're looking at 24 there, and this would be meters as given in the question. Now, part b says find the values of t when s equals 0, so again, you know, we have our formula s equals zero and then it's just a matter of solving or factorizing what we've got so we can only take the t out so we get 16 minus t squared therefore t equals zero or the 16 minus t squared is equal to zero so 16 is equal to that t squared so t is now plus or minus 4 
Now, obviously, we can't have a negative time. So in this case, it would be just four. So this is, you know, when s equals zero. So these are the two times in which this particle or this body is at the origin. Oh. So you think, you know, it's going in one direction, eventually slows down and then starts moving back towards the origin. So at the start point when t equals zero, it's at the origin. And then after it's gone one way and then back, four seconds later, it is at the origin again. Okay, so you know, if you imagine it moving on a straight line, it might move along this way first and then start coming back here at the origin, and then it would probably keep on going. Okay, but you know, this total time to go up and back to the origin would be four seconds. Okay, hopefully that makes uh, sense to you guys. So, another straightforward question part of a larger previous exam question um what you'll see here particle moves along the x-axis time t velocity of p is v in the direction of x increasing so in the direction of that positive x where v is this so v is 8t minus 2t squared when t equals zero p is at the origin okay kind of standard um, type of setup there so we need to find the time taken for the particle to come to instantaneous rest so that means obviously when v equals zero so v equals obviously 8t minus 2t squared when that is zero we have 8t minus 2t squared now i want to factorize here don't divide by, you know, t or anything like that. But we can take 2t out. It gives me 4 minus t inside my brackets. So that would mean that 2t equals 0 or t equals 0. So it means it's obviously starting at uh, v equals 0. And then the other option is obviously 4 minus t equals 0. So t equals 4. Oh, same times as last example. So those are the times when the particle comes to that instantaneous rest. And that's it for part A. It's worth noting before we move on, it's not always like t equals zero. Um, sometimes they're just two actual other numbers, you know, not necessarily zero for one of them. Just uh, you usually got a quadratic or something like that to solve, though. Now, part B is the greatest speed of the particle in the interval between 0 and 4. So we know that's actually the interval we got from part A, the two points where it's at into instantaneous rest. So for this one, we need to work out our value of t. Because we have the two points it meets at 0 and 4, we can see that by symmetry it should be t equals 2. Alternatively, you can think of a, a graph. I know I said I wasn't going to draw any. But you can think of a graph, and this might be more useful if it's not a nice symmetrical one. So here, you know, we, we've got a negative t squared graph. It says t and v. And it's going to look like, you know, this kind of thing. And we're crossing here at 4 and 0. So I know it's symmetrical between those two points. So this peak, which will be our maximum velocity there, highest point, is going to happen when t equals 2. Okay, so that's what I want. t equals 2. That gives me the max velocity. Okay, obviously if it's not a nice symmetrical graph, you know, drawing it, looking at where you get that turning point. And as you'll see in later videos, we'll start using differentiation and things. So, you know, you won't always need to do it this way. But it's there just for the understanding. So when t equals 2, we get 8 times 2 minus 2 times 2 squared. So that's 16 minus 8, or 8 meters per second 
and that's it nice straightforward as i said um you know maybe you can use a little bit of sketching but you don't really need to so a few questions for you to try um as always answers will be at the end and you know if you do don't watch too much of this video that's fine um i think from the next couple of videos will be a little bit more important within this uh this particular unit